Howdy folks and welcome back to another exciting video. Today we're back on my 1980 Dodge short bed with a big block 400 under the hood with an automatic behind it. This thing is a riot. Now you haven't seen this thing in a, in a while in a video, but that's because we're getting it out today. Now it was fun, but it didn't make enough power, but we're going to fix that. Stick around to the end of the video and see how fast can we make this truck go. That's right folks, my 1980 Dodge D100 has come a long way since I bought it way back in 2021. It was an original 318 four speed that was previously swapped with a big block automatic. I recently slapped together a low buck 400 to replace the locked up engine that was in it. And we made quick work of removing that old engine so we could gather all the necessary accessories required for this swap. We then made it up the engine and transmission to drop it in place. And one cam break in later, we were sounding like this. So you haven't seen this truck in a while. It was on the YouTube channel back when we were doing the Monaco, which the Monaco's coming back. Don't worry, it's actually over there. So when we were doing both of these vehicles, it just got to be a lot. Now, you haven't seen up to date at this point because it never got posted. What we ended up doing was getting this thing drivable. So let's flash back about two years ago and you're gonna see what we had to do to make that happen. Brakes are done. We're going to try and back this thing out again and uh, see if we can actually stop it. And if we can, we'll go get some more gas and see if we can take it down the road for the first time in a very long time. I think it's, well, when it was low on fuel, that carburetor has not been touched. It was breaking up real bad. So I wonder if we could, uh, you know, do a little bit of tuning. I've never even set the timing, so it could still be way off, but it did a burnout, left two black marks. So that's kind of nice. I like that. All right, now that you're caught up from that point on, uh, we were moving into here. It was like May of 2022. We were getting all of our shop stuff, all the house stuff, moved into the new shop, new location, moving cars, moving everything. And it just got to be too hectic for me. And I had two projects, three projects really going on at the same time. So it ended up being like, which one is gonna be the one that we do later? That one. That one got to be done later. So I actually drove it here two years ago. unloaded all the stuff that was in the bed of it in the shop and then parked it right in the spot. So it did drive to where it sits right now, but as you can see, it's been neglected for a little bit, <laughs> unfortunately. So uh, first things first, we're gonna have to air the tires up because I know for a fact the tires will go flat. And I was just looking, that one's flat. Golly, look at this grass. I cut everything else, but I just had, I sprayed poison through here and it grew right back. So now I gotta weed eat all this. See what? Briar might have to weed it. No! See, that tire's holding there. We're good on that one. Yep, that one's flat. Look here, I am just deep in grass right now. And that one's good. So we have two flat fronts. Let me go get the air tank and we'll air it up before we try to move it. Right. She's a little leaky, but it's good enough to get us in the shop. Here, hissing. 
so we have a limited amount of time to get this up there. Come on out the ground. This was one of the first vehicles that I brought over here. I think it was like number two or three. So this thing has been here longer than any of them and we finally got to the point where we're gonna work on it. Hopefully it's just the bead and not the sidewall. I don't know that's a sizable hole in the sidewall there, but it's fine. That's not good. Okay, we gotta go. Quick, quick, quick. Ah! <laughs> oh, I gotta close this. I had headers on this truck and I stole them to put on my 69 Charger. So we're gonna go back with the stock style manifolds for now. This is just to get it running so it's not just obnoxious because we have the original exhaust, or not original, but it's got, I think, Dynamax mufflers on it. Tried and true Optima, and drop that right in place. So we have put the manifolds on. We've got this quick fuel carburetor on that has been on a couple of different builds. Uh, we're gonna see if it'll just fire up, kind of get a baseline, see where we're at after a couple years. I mean, we're gonna, hopefully gonna put it up on the lift. I don't think it has enough transmission fluid in it to even move. <laughs> Throttle cable's not hooked up. <laughs> Let me close the chuck, try it again. in that one. That one, this one was the one about the truck. And I put diesel in that one. Well, then, so, yeah, that's all we have. We have no gas. There she is. She's back. All right. We just need fuel. All right, go ahead and cut it off. Well, we had like three loose bolts in this corner. So that's where our leak was coming from the transmission fluid. And uh, we have the stock manifolds in like you saw, which had exhaust hooked up to it. I just took it all off because we were using headers. So Briar is gonna get these off for us. I cut these because I couldn't lift the truck high enough back at uh, the old shop. So I ended up cutting them at the back. They're rusted out anyway. So we're just gonna remove these and then bolt our other exhaust back in place. Nice. Yeah, see it had rust right here. The other one is rotted out on the other side. So didn't hurt my feelings to cut it. You know, there's some more pinholes there. That one not want to come out. It's questionable. That uh oh. It's 916. What? Okay. Well, hey man, they're just making do with what they had. Rotate it. Yeah, you go. Yeah, look at that rust hole right there. Ew, Stuff falling out. out of the exhaust. So that one had a really nasty hole right there, and right there. And the rest of it seemed pretty solid, so we're gonna reuse it. Here's what we got. Uh, these look like two and a quarter pipe in some places, but it'll bolt on and it'll get us to have exhaust real quick and real easy, and for free, because it came with the truck. Uh, these are some Dynamax mufflers. Don't really know what they could be. Heck, we might end up cutting the bottoms out of them like we like to do. This is just to make it have daily driver status, because open manifolds just isn't really cutting it at the moment. Flip it. Ooh. Drive shaft of the way. Oh, 
How convenient is that? A little janky, but it works. We've got full exhaust now. Look at there. Everything's lined up and uh, it was relatively simple. We had to kind of goof around with this mount here, but um, we have an exhaust system now. I've never heard this truck actually be quiet, so I think we should try and fire it up and see what it sounds like. We went and got five gallons of gas, just rigged up the electric pump just for now, and uh, we're gonna see if it'll actually crank this time. Let me pump it up a little bit. It's full of fuel. Go ahead. Sounds like a dirty car. Well, let me try and keep it running. Oh, go ahead. Sounds good, but the manifold's leak, so. Try again. Whoa! Ah! 40 different wash just flew out of this thing. There's a nest in the inner fender. They're flying everywhere. Wow. They are all, they're just buzzing everywhere out of this thing. There's gotta be a nest down in, inside there. They're just, they're crawling out by the dozens. Yeah, we'll just uh, let them kind of clear out and do their thing and then we'll come back. Let it warm up real good. So it runs, it runs great. It runs just as good as it did when I parked it. And I'm not surprised by that at all because it has hardly any miles on that cam break-in. I mean, it's a very bone stock, low compression 400 with a very mild cam, a very tight converter and highway gear. So it's a good driver right now, but I want this thing to just blow the tires off and be actually pretty quick. So, you know, with all smart decisions that you do when you have a perfectly running and driving truck, you tear it all apart. So we're gonna pull the engine out, of course, you know, why not? Because I have something over here in the corner that you're gonna love. Something that will actually push this truck way beyond what this 400 is capable. This is my low deck big block. Now don't let it fool you, the valve covers are lying. It is not a 440, it is in fact a 383 HP out of a 1971 car, and that's all I know. I checked the VIN, it's only a partial VIN for some reason, but it did verify it is a 1971. And over here, on the little pad here, it does tell me it's a 383 HP, which really doesn't matter because of what's been done to the engine. I mean, the great thing is, is that you get, you know, a forged rotating assembly, and the pistons are actually aftermarket. So it's supposed to have a 30 over forged piston. We're gonna find all that out here in just a second. Again, the story goes in like 2020 or 21, it was built, uh, you know, to the standard right here. The paint job is really ugly, I get it, but you know, don't let that fool you again. And then it was only raced for four seasons, I believe so. Uh, and again, only raced. And the story goes, again, this is all speculation, it piloted a 64 B body which is like a Belvedere, Plymouth, Dodge, you know, something like that, Polara, to a quarter mile of 1170s. So 
I don't know if that's true, but we're gonna find out actually and see if that's actually legit. Once again, the valve cover is a liar. And the rockers were already loose whenever I bought the engine. Again, the guy I got it from on Marketplace had taken it apart just to take some pictures because you know, his plan was to put it in a race car and then he ended up selling it. So here we are. Now what's interesting about this is that we're running factory stamp steel rockers. So it's got hydraulic uh, lifters, nothing crazy. They're flat tap it. So it should be fairly simple to run. The weird thing that I noticed is this. Now on these Mopars of this era, they actually oil through the cylinder head. You have pressure that will fill up that rocker shaft and then oil each rocker arm. The push rods should be solid, but whoever put this engine together somehow got some oil through push rods to work with the factory rockers. I don't know how well that's gonna work. I've never seen anything like that, but hopefully it's good enough to do something. So we're gonna pull all these push rods out and see what we've got going on for us. Don't worry, all these head bolts are pretty much finger tight, but I didn't get the chance to inspect it. I mean, the guy I bought it from was a pretty trustworthy guy. It's just uh, over four hours away, and I didn't feel like pulling the heads off right then and there. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks fantastic. We've got flat tops. And no ring ridge. I mean, listen, if I drag my fingernail across it, can't even catch. You can still see a little bit of cross hatching in there. Uh, it looks fantastic. So I feel really good about this side. Hopefully the other side looks as good. Look down in there. It looks great. No crazy wear, nothing. There's a part number. I'm gonna look that up real quick and see what that comes up with. These are in fact sealed power 30 over forged pistons. So that is fantastic for what we have planned to do with this thing. Very excited to see this, some good progress over here. I like what I see, folks. That's a very, very good news. Still some coolant in there. So I'll have to clean that out. But I uh, want to drop the pan, just check everything on that. But before we flip it over, we do need to uh, actually pull the cam and lifters, make sure that it's okay, too. It is a used set, so we do need to make sure that we put the lifters back in the original location. Here's a good opportunity for us to check the health of this engine and see exactly how things were going when it was last ran. Mm, it's dark. I don't see any coolant in it though, or no metal shavings, so that's a good sign. Why would you change the oil in an engine you're gonna pull? So I get that completely. As you can tell, uh, this oil pan is pretty cool. It's an original unit, like a chrome Mopar performance oil pan, but it's got a huge dent on this side and it's been patched and welded over on this side. So I'll probably won't reuse this thing. Nice, double roller. Doesn't look like a whole lot of wear on it either. That's good, we'll replace the chain, of course, but that's really awesome. There we go. Woo! Oh, dipstick stuck. There we go. Woo, man. We'll get this cam out because I don't know what it is. I see a little purple on it though. You know what that means? It might be a Mopar Performance cam. Gotta be very careful. Yeah, there's a little purple on here. That might be a purple shaft cam. Not a lot, just a little. Just enough to make me feel kind of good about it. Very careful. Very careful. Nice. Man, lots of goodies in here. So inside we have a steel crank, of course, because it is a 383. So assuming that it is stock, it's been rebalanced as I can tell, and uh, we reconditioned the stock rods. I checked the part number and they are stock 383 rods. That's great, no big deal there. The cool thing is that we, it looks like we have ARP hardware in here too. So we've got ARP studs. I think the rod hardware is also ARP. So, you know, they were building this thing to withstand some high RPM. I've spun the engine over quite a few times and nothing's catching, nothing's hanging. I may just pull one rod and one main, just make sure they look okay, and then bolt this thing back together with new gaskets. One thing I will do though, 
Let's go ahead and check that rear main seal, make sure that it looks good. Everything that it needs gasket wise and just drop it back in. I did some searching on the camshaft. I just can't find any identification marks on it. I mean, we do have a, what I believe to be a Mopar purple cam. It's got some purple left on it and it does has a stripe on the back, but I'm thinking it's a dual pattern cam and I'm not sure to be honest with you, but whatever it is, it's probably still good. It looks fine to me. I kept all the lifters in order, so we may just put it right back in place where it was. I just really want to find out the identification on it so I know what kind of converter I need and what gear. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. There we go, engine's out. Really relatively easy to do. So this engine is great. We will save this and put it in something else because there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a good, decently mild 400 big block. Nothing crazy about it. Has a pretty decent aftermarket summit performance cam. Uh, it's a good engine. It just needs something to be put in. Our engine bay is open. We've got all this room. So we're gonna just clean this up one more time again. We did it before, but we'll do it one more time. We gotta put a torque converter in it and get everything sorted out because we're going with a big boy engine. Briar and I have done quite a lot of cleaning up this afternoon. Uh, basically getting everything prepped, all these gasket surfaces cleaned up, making sure that they're going to be good. <laughs> there was like five different layers of paint. These are 346 casting cylinder heads and they have had the uh, intake ports opened up. So there's been quite a bit of porting done. All I did was just kind of machine it down a little bit and clean it up that you can see they've been opened up a good bit to help so that's good otherwise they're just a stock cylinder head stock valve sizes uh, they have the aftermarket springs with dampers to match the cam that's in the engine and you can see that i've gone through and just knocked off all the carbon buildup basically and uh, just sprayed everything so that it wouldn't rust and we knocked off as much paint as we could but it took how long did you spend on that like an hour a good bit a good bit so it's better than what it was but uh we have just about everything to make this work it's time to put the cylinder heads on uh we're running a slightly thicker head gasket than what was on it it had steel shim gaskets and i'll be honest with you i was slightly worried about any kind of like deck unevenness block even this or like for the cylinder head i just didn't know so we suffer a little bit in compression ratio but we have peace of mind Now this is an unknown camshaft, but based on the fact that it's got a little purple on it and it's got this stripe that identifies it on the end, it tells me that it's more than likely a Mopar Performance camshaft. So I went ahead and measured the lobe and it's actually right at 509. The advertised duration is a 292 or at 50, it's 248. So it's a pretty good honking cam right there. I've only really messed with the 284, 484. Uh, not the 292.509, so this is a, a step up in the right direction, but I think this should be a fun camshaft nonetheless. And the lobes look good, but I'm dumb. I goofed. So I took the lifters out because I wanted to check everything, and um, when I went to, I, I organized it, I made sure it went back in the same spot, and I rolled the engine over, all the lifters fell out. 
So I gotta put new lifters in it because I don't know which ones went where. So we gotta do this like a regular old cam break in. I have another cam that we might put in it later, but it was way too big for factory rockers. <laughs> it had like 550 lift with the stock rockers. So this thing would probably punch a hole for the atmosphere for the push rod. And in you go. Here we are. So at this point, I like to put a little oil on the timing chain, but I want something to stick because over time that oil will run itself off and run the thing dry. So I like to use the Rogu penetrating gel lube. You can even see it's got a timing chain on it because what this is, you spray it on there, but it sticks. And it actually, literally like the name says, turns into a gel whenever it dries basically. So if we put a little bit on there, I don't have to worry about the timing chain not having any kind of lubrication when we actually go to fire it up. I use it when I'm storing stuff, uh, door hinges, literally. I mean, that stuff will last forever because like I said, it kind of develops a film on it and it keeps things, making sure that they're rust prevented and they have like a good lubrication on it. So check out the Rogo Gel Lube, it's a good product. So I, when I'm doing these, I like to take a little, just a little dollop of RTV and put it right there in the top, kind of like a glue and that'll just hold her still because when you're trying to put it all together, it gets really annoying. Because <laughs> I've got these little pins down here that'll locate it, but nothing's holding it in the top. So now you can put your cover on and then run your bolts through it and that'll hold it. See there? Look at there, holding itself on. Barely. <laughs> almost had it. Well, we flipped the engine over. We've got the primary gasket on. We put a windage tray on here, all from the other truck. Got our pickup in, and I'm going to lay our oil pan right in its place. There we go. Look at there. There she is, that blue looks fantastic. I really like that, I forgot how much I like Chrysler blue. Uh, we went ahead and got the dipstick put on, got uh, the balancer, water pump housing, pulleys, went ahead and put oil in it with a break-in loop, all that good stuff, got an oil pressure gauge because we're gonna go ahead and start trying to prime this thing. We gotta get some oil pressure. I've already got it to where it's circulating oil because listen to this. might not be able to hear it, but there's air bubbles coming up out of the lifters because when you first break in a cam or any kind of engine like that that's new, you have no oil anywhere, <laughs> anywhere at all. So it's really crucial to go ahead and prime the oil system before you have any kind of issues because this thing's running dry for like a couple seconds, that's where problems show up. Going almost 75 pounds of oil pressure. So on these Chryslers, they've got oiling holes within the uh, crank and cam bearings that they have to line up perfectly so that way oil will get up to the rockers. So I'm going to spin the engine over while we do this so that way maybe we can get some oil up to the rockers themselves. Whoa! Oh my goodness, that was a lot of oil. Did you see that? I heard it, I didn't see it. Oil just, I've never seen Chrysler Rockers do that. What the heck? Oh, you know why? It's because the guy who built this engine put oil through push rods, which is insane. 
So this thing's really getting some oil, <laughs> especially on the top end. Hang on, hang on, hang on, here we go. Oil, no! Ah! So we had like a 2000 to 2200 TCI uh, converter. I think it was a 12 inch maybe, possibly a 11. This is a nine and a half uh, PTC 3500 stall. Uh, maybe possibly a little too much, but I think it's gonna be good, especially when we get our new gears in there. But with this torque monster we got going on with the 383, this should be pretty close in the range. I've got another PTC in my police cards, a 3400, and it's actually honestly pretty drivable, and that's why I like them. So let's slide this bad boy into the transmission. And there's a completed engine. We went ahead and mounted the Edelbrock Performer RPM intake. That was a new unit that I bought at a car show recently. And uh, well, I guess it's used, I don't know. It was new in the box, but nobody ever used it. So we've got everything ready to go so we're going to move the engine hoist over here and hook it from our old engine get this thing lined up and ready to put in here so i'm looking forward to this thing firing up hopefully that converter does converter things what do you think briar i think it's blue I it, like it. I'm it, ready. it is very blue very blue indeed Well, I have to apologize. We had a time lapse going, but my camera decided to just delete the file altogether. So regardless, the engine is in, thank goodness. So it looks good in there. Looks like it fits at home. I mean, it's almost like it's supposed to have a big block in it. So we have a lot of things to do left, like all the accessories, the coolant system, fuel system, all that has to be done. And I checked my valve covers, guess what? They don't fit. So I'm gonna have to come up with something different for the time being, but Nonetheless, it is ready to go. It's been a long day and a long night and another long day, but look at this. The engine is in, and we are finally ready to fire this thing up. I've got everything painted, got it all mounted in. We've got our valve covers on, all the accessories put back in. The last thing we need to do is actually fill up our coolant and do a couple other odds and ends, but that is going to do it. I mean, we're ready. We gotta do a cam break in real fast. Uh, put the manifolds on just for this because uh, my headers aren't ready yet. So we'll put those on after the cam break in. It was just an easy bolt on deal, but we're ready. Whew, that was a lot of work. I just really hope this thing goes the way it should. And it might help to uh, plug in the distributor. You know, that would go a long way to making this thing run. Weird how that works sometimes. So there we go. We've got five gallons of gas here. Everything's hooked up. We filled it up with water just in case we have any leakages. I fixed the uh, leak at the thermostat housing gasket. That's fixed. Our belts are tight, full of coolant. Fuel's hooked up. It's primed. Uh, we've got oil pressure and temp gauges up here. So we should have everything be able to be monitored. Batteries hooked up with our Optima. Gosh, I just, I hope we didn't mess something up, but. I guess nothing left to do but to do it, you know what I mean? Let's prime the throttle a little bit. All right, it's full of gas. I've got earplugs in, so if I'm yelling, I'm sorry, but we're gonna try it. First crank. Okay. May need a little more timing. Don't really, I, I think I set it at top dead center, so let's advance it a little bit. I think we might be 180 out. I've been advancing the timing quite a lot, but let's try it again. Hmm. To me, when it's popping like that, it makes me think that it's actually extremely late ignition timing. So I went around and rotated the distributors one plug so that way we can get some more advance on it. 
Uh, if not, we can always go right back to where we were. So I think that'll help it though. Fuel pump, couple squirts. We have a very serious valve cover leak down here and it is pouring out. I didn't know it was that bad. Oh boy. And it might be the rear main. No, it's, it looks like it's all coming from the valve cover. Yeah, we need to let it cool off for a little bit. We'll fix that valve cover gasket, which I mean, that's in the grand scheme of it, it's not a ton of oil, but you don't want that much on the floor when you're trying to break it in. So we'll just uh, take a moment and then fix that. Well, I pulled the valve cover off and it was actually curled up on this corner because whoever had this engine before me put these studs on them and it just wrinkled up in that back corner where I couldn't see it. So that should be fixed now. We're going to try and fire it up one more time and see does it leak anymore and has it run.
fantastic news. I actually was able to uh, mess around with the idle adjustment, kind of get my timing where I wanted it to, you know, mess with the mixed screws, because whenever I put it down in gear, this thing would just die. So now we've got it to where it seems like it idles pretty happy. A little too much timing. Now it goes down into reverse, neutral, drive. Much better. Now that it's running pretty good, we figured we could go ahead and drop the fuel tank because it does uh, not run on its own fuel supply. I gotta hold that. Oh, it stinks. That's, yeah, it's better. Not, <laughs> That's bad. It's not good. Well, luckily, there's not a lot in here. There's hardly any gas in this thing. We shook it this way, shook it that way. There's no liquid in here, but there's a little bit of gel on the bottom of the tank. Someone take some Poppy's Batina heavy duty degreaser and just spray a ton in the bottom. We couldn't get the sending unit off or we would do that. And I'm afraid that if I have to drill it out, I'm gonna damage something and I don't wanna do that. So instead of messing things up, let's just try to fix what we can. So we spray a bunch of degreaser in here. And just fill it up to the brim. Clear on Briar's side. We're almost clear on your side. It'll go. It'll go. Yeah. Come on. Just get it right up against that jack and then I'll let it back down to get it out of the way. I've got it. All right. You can get around the stuff of the post. All right. Let me. Let me. Come on out of there. Well, looky here. So we got the axle out. Now you're probably wondering, where's the donor? You've seen the donor, the Petty Truck. The Petty Truck has an eight and a quarter just like the black truck does, except it's got a 391. Now, dad wants a highway gear. He's been looking for a highway rear axle for this truck for a while because he likes to drive it. It's not a race car. He likes to use it and he drives it probably more than anything he's got. So whenever the opportunity came up, he said, I want the rear axle out of your truck, and then you can have mine. We believe this is a 391. We're going to check and see if we can find any kind of like tags or anything on it. But what I think it is, based on the gear ratio, the tire height, and the RPM, I think it's a 391. So this is a 294, but it's a sure grip. So it's actually an awesome rear end, and it's got the 11-inch brakes on it. So this is a pretty valuable rear axle. I mean, it's a pretty solid unit here and it works great. And he's got a 391 Sure Grip and we're just gonna trade even. So I'm gonna take his rear axle out, put it in my truck and then take my rear axle and put it in his truck. Oh joy, oh joy. But hey, you know what? We've had a great day today. Really enjoyed this. Engine runs surprisingly well. We've gotta, you know, check over a few more things. Uh, we've got the fuel tank in. Uh, I, I think it's pretty clean. We flushed it out about five or six times and it just started running out clear water so we put it back in and we hooked everything back up i just got to put the fuel pump on and hook up it up to our fuel line once i do that i'll put about three or four gallons of gas and just see if it'll run but so far so good i'm loving this There we have it, folks. We've got the rear end in. Again, it's the 391. Uh, we've got everything hooked back up, thankfully. Man, it takes a lot of effort sometimes just to do that, but we ended up having to uh, replace the U-bolts. That was the hardest part, was just cutting those loose. Because once we got those loose, everything just kind of fell into place. But man, we had to replace those, got those put in. 
because that 294 with a 3500 stall it's not fun so <laughs> i was driving this thing up and you know back and forth on the lift and you really had to gas it just to get it to move so those 391s should be in our favor i would think so we're going to back it off real quick and also we went ahead and replaced the front wheels and tires with just some rollers that i had because uh, this these fronts kept going flat and these hold air so until we get our wheel and tire situation sorted out this setup will be what's on it for right now we've got something in the works again well ignore the oil leak this is coming from the fuel pump block off plate because i didn't put a gasket on it i forgot about it uh, i need to actually put the fuel pump on well i was going to here's what happened so this thing started smoking it sounded like it was really low on power wasn't running right and i'm looking in the inside of the intake manifold and it looks like I don't know what. I mean, all this is dry, but it was smoking really bad out of this side. I mean, look at the inside of the manifold. It's all oily and gross. Like, just for reference, here's the other side. Dry. Like, completely dry. The side's like some, looks like some residual oil from who knows what. But I, I don't know what is going... This is the side it was smoking out of really bad. So I guess I just need to, you know, pull the spark plugs and see what the deal is. It's not good. Whatever it is, it is not good. We've got the spark plugs out of the passenger side. Number one, pretty oily. Don't know why. Number two, looks like a pretty good burn. Actually a little lean. Number three, oily again. Number four, super rich. So all these plugs are reading something totally different. So what I might try and do is clean them up, put them back in, fire it up again, and see what's different, if anything. Did we blow a head gasket? Did something happen? I don't know. So I'm going to clean these up real quick, put it back in, fire it up, and see if anything changes. Okay, let's try this again. I don't know what's going on. I've never had head gasket issues. I know I torqued every single one of them down, checked them two or three times. It's fired up. Mm, that doesn't sound good. Give her a little gas.
something's wrong. To me, it sounds like this thing has a dead cylinder or something. Whatever's happening, it's not good. So, I mean, it does have blow by, but I've got plenty of engines with blow by. Something is wrong. Maybe we blew a head gasket. I mean, this is a interesting color for the coolant, but it just seems like uh, if it was oily, it would not be dry. For some reason, it was leaking this green, but I just put straight water in it due to the break in. I was going to drain it and put you know regular coolant in it, but I pulled the dipstick tube, and it doesn't look like water's in the oil. It looks clear. Like, it looks totally fine. I don't know what it is, guys. I think I'm just going to have to throw in the towel on this poor engine. I just hate that I spent all this time, effort, money on a dead engine. I do not know what happened. But you would think you would probably see coolant somewhere. I don't know. But the fact that every time we run this thing, it smokes so bad out of here, and there's oil inside the manifold, tells me that something's bad. Because it, it ran great yesterday. Like, it was running very good. It was snappy, had really good throttle response. Now it's labored. Like, it's really struggling to rev. I mean, you saw me revving it up, and it just couldn't do anything. Sorry guys, I hate this. This is the side that was causing trouble. So I'm gonna pull the valve cover off. See if there's any, oh, yep. We've lost two push rods here. Three push rods, four push rods. Well, where did they go? <laughs> I don't know if I wanna find out. I have no idea. That was straight too. They fell out for some reason. I don't even see that one, do you? Uh-uh. Oh, I got it. Straight. So that was the other one, wasn't it? That's four. Four push rods fell out. The rocker, all the rocker assembly is still tight. No movement. That one's fine. I guess we need to check the push rods for damage. See what what even happened. I don't know. I've never in my life seen that before ever that is so strange i'm starting to wonder since i had to put lifters in it did i put uh different lifters in what these push rods should accommodate maybe he put like shorter push rods to accommodate for it longer but they looked identical and it was still oiling through that is i have never in my life seen that before so i just what i really hope is that no lifters fell out and no damage occurred so <clears throat> let me just see if i can look down in there i don't see any damage to the rockers necessarily well we checked these push rods with uh, factory length push rods they're identical don't really know what's going on so i went to put the eight back in there and we have nine so who knows what we're thinking is one of them fell off on that side and uh we probably got the same issue over here so I'm gonna pull this valve cover off. I'm trying not to scratch it. My sweet, sweet paint. Leave the gasket. Come on over there. There we are. Oh, Oop. there's one. Yep. Two. I'm missing two on this side. So this thing was running on four cylinders. I have never, ever seen that. And the fact that they're the identical length, they're the exact same length as a stock push rod, yet we're still having trouble with that. So I, I don't I don't know what else to do, but just put them back in there. Because I, I bought reproduction stock style lifters. They are the exact same style as what I took out. I made sure that they were the same length and everything, just in case something was different. All that was the same. The only difference between this push rod and a stock one is it's got a hole in it. That's it. That's the only difference. They're the same diameter, same length. Everything is exactly the same. 
but for some reason, the push rods are falling out. No damage here. Rockers look fine. You see the push rod down in there? That one's way out of whack. Yeah. That one's on, that one's on. Those two were on. That one's missing completely. Ooh, oh. wow. Well, that ain't good. <laughs> they probably fell out and got in a bind. Does that account for all of them? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have all the push rods. So I guess we'll just put some stock ones back in it. Here, Briar, if you'd like to find the nearest trash can, that'd be great. Thank you. That one's in, that one's in. That one's in, that one's in. Good and good. Good and good, awesome put stock style push rods i mean they're literally stock length came out of another big block uh they should work they're the exact same length but they're solid um we tighten everything down uh, we're gonna spin it over just a little bit just to double check make sure nothing's in a bind but i really don't know what happened to be honest with you i'm a little bit shocked confused concerned yeah all the above emotions Keep on, keep on, come on, come on, come on, hold it over, we got one not moving, hold it over, we got one not moving, I was able to push it down and now it seems like it's spinning, go ahead now, it's this one here, It's loose, but it don't have any oil pressure built up. So maybe once it runs, let me check how all these are looking. If not, we might have a collapsed lifter. All these are good. Well, at least it's the easy side to pull the valve cover off of. We're gonna crank it with the valve covers off because I gotta see if this rocker's gonna do something. Go ahead. I think that's not gonna work. All right, pump the pedal and try to crank it again. Why do we have a rocker that's not doing anything? Oh, you know what would help? If I actually put all the plug wires back on. Give a little gas. Go ahead. Try to keep it running. Go ahead. Push rods fell out again. Because it was pumping it up and then it just quit. This one fell back out. And then this one never pumped up at all. The rest of them were working, but this one, it's, it's sideways now. Why? Don't you just love it whenever you have a perfectly running, driving, stopping vehicle that all it needed was a good cleanup and some exhaust and then you ruined it well that's what happened to me today unfortunately i made this truck worse i'm gonna admit it i don't know what happened never experienced what we've experienced today ever i put a lot of these big blocks together a lot of small blocks a lot of engines in general together never had this issue before i don't know what happened so my best bet until we can at least tear the engine apart and look at it is to probably just get it out disassemble it see what's wrong and then put the other engine back in it. I know it's a low compression 400, but it ran so well. And then we might put a bigger cam in it to kind of compensate for the new torque converter. We've got the gearing to support it. We have everything else. We just need to get this thing into the RPM range where it's happy. So since I know that one's good, we just need to put it all back together. Sorry that we didn't have this thing running and driving. I really hope you guys understand what we went through in this video, how hard it was to get this thing together. And I hope you understand how little sleep I got during this whole process. I was up to like 3 a.m., probably three or four nights this past week, just trying to figure out what happened. So without further ado, 
please like and subscribe for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a comment. Let me know what you think it might be. That might be my best bet. You might help me figure out what happened. Also, t-shirts and stickers are down in the link below because all that money goes back into stuff like this and helping me kind of figure out what did I just do and what did I break. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.